Breaking news today. Despite Western pressure, trade between Russia and China continues to flourish. Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Commission, and Emmanuel Macron, President of France, are in China this week to try to influence Beijing's foreign policy toward Ukraine in the wake of Xi Jinping's trip to Moscow. From the beginning of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, China has presented itself as a neutral party, seeking to mediate the situation while refusing to provide Russia with military aid. When asked about Beijing's continued closeness to Moscow, the Chinese capital's official line is that it will not accept dictation from any outside source regarding its own foreign policy. The more uncertain the world, the more important it is for China and Russia to advance their relations steadily, according to Chinese Foreign Minister Qin Gang. China and Russia working together will give the international community a powerful engine. Xi's official visit to Moscow last month was intended. In part, to strengthen the two countries' comprehensive strategic partnership, increase economic and trade cooperation, and send a signal to the West that China is capable of defining its own foreign policy in the context of the Ukrainian conflict. Cooperation on the economic front is important for both the Chinese and Russian economies because it helps them avoid becoming too dependent on the West. Since they can meet each other's needs, the economies of the two countries are highly complementary and compatible. The expansion of bilateral trade is the best indicator of this compatibility and complementarity. Critics point to the uneven dynamics of this growth, but many experts highlight the fact that the volume of trade turnover between the two countries has recovered to previous values and has nearly exceeded them after the COVID 19 pandemic. In 2020, the value of trade between Russia and China fell by less than 2%, and in 2021, it increased, reaching nearly US$147 billion. United States dollars. A de dollarization trend has been sparked, and the appeal of the yuan has increased as a result of the current geopolitical situation associated with the conflict in Ukraine and the policy of unprecedented sanctions against Russia by the United States and other Western countries. The two economies are complementary, as evidenced by the fact that Russian Chinese trade turnover, which had been falling in the first quarter of 2022, began to rise in the second quarter and reached a record of $190 billion by the end of the year. The use of yuan in non cash transactions is expanding in Russia as the country considers a gradual de dollarization of its economy. In the third quarter of 2018, The yuan's share of Russia's foreign exchange market rose to 40 to 45% from just 1% at the beginning of 2022. The yuan's monthly trading volume on the Moscow exchange has already surpassed that of the US dollar, according to the exchange's daily transaction reports. Russia's orientation shift Russia's turn to the east began roughly two years before the 2014 Ukrainian crisis and the ensuing Western sanctions. While the United States sees China's progress as a zero sum game, Russia sees it as a chance for win win cooperation. In 2012, when he was re elected as president of Russia for a third time, Vladimir Putin said, I am convinced that the Chinese economic growth is by no means a threat, but a challenge, which brings an enormous potential of business cooperation between Russia and China, a chance to catch the Chinese wind in the sails of our economy. This was an unmistakable invitation for Russia to make the most of the opportunities presented by increased economic cooperation with China. Russia was hosting the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation APEC, summit in Vladivostok at the time, making this a fortuitous turn of events. There was no talk of a need to find a replacement for Western investors in Russia because they were still present at the time. Instead, Russia made this shift to more evenly distribute and diversify its economic ties with other countries. In 2022, everything altered. After many Western companies left Russia, President Putin said his government was ready to help Chinese firms fill the void. Many Russian businesses in the past have imported European machinery to modernize their factories. Russian businesses are increasingly turning to China for equipment and financing as a result of the EU's ban on similar shipments. Russian consumers are increasingly purchasing automobiles made in China. Among the top 10 selling automakers in Russia during the first two months of 2023 were Haval, 
Geely, Changan, Great Wall, and Fao. Increased trade between Russia and China is beneficial for both countries. Udokan Copper, a Russian mining giant, is nearing completion on a copper mining complex that will primarily supply the Chinese market. As China continues its green transition, this will help meet the country's rising copper needs. Norilska Nickel, one of the world's largest producers of the metal, has also shifted its exports to China from its home country of Russia. Seabor, a Russian petrochemicals company, has doubled its capacity to produce polyethylene and polypropylene since it began full-scale production in 2020 at its Zap Sib production complex in western Siberia. Companies like Seabor in Russia can help China with their polyethylene shortage. Gazprom's chairman has stated that the company is increasing its gas exports to China and is in talks with Mongolia about a potential new supply project across the country. The Chinese and Russian economies are complementary in many ways, and these are just a few. Tensions between Beijing and Washington are likely to worsen, and economic confrontation between the two seems inevitable against the backdrop of U.S. attempts to contain China's economic and political influence. This is further evidence that China and Russia should work to strengthen their ties.